So the aim of this presentation is to be able to distinguish between reversible reactions and systems at equilibrium and to describe features of a system at equilibrium. First of all, let's consider a reaction which would not be considered to be particularly reversible. So here we've got methane burning with excess oxygen, plentiful supply of oxygen, so complete combustion to form CO2 and H2O. And ordinarily, one would expect carbon dioxide to react with water to make methane and oxygen. So we would consider this to be essentially a one-way reaction, certainly at, at room conditions. At GCSC, you have met before some examples of reversible reactions. So let's have a look at two examples of those. The first one is this one. So in this example, copper sulfate hydrated can be heated strongly to drive off the water of crystallization, which leaves the system as steam. And then more water could be added to the anhydrous white powder copper 2 sulfate. And that white powder would then turn blue because of the presence of CuSO4, which is now hydrated. So you've met that one before. The example which you've met before is this one here. So in this example, I'll just change pen colour so that you can see the annotations a little bit better. At this end of the tube, there starts off some NH4Cl. Uh, that's ammonium chloride, and that's heated strongly here. Here, a little gap forms where we've got both HCl gas and NH3 gas existing independently because the temperature is too high for them to then recombine up here to make NH4Cl solid where the temperature is a little bit lower. So again, this is a reversible reaction, but this one is also, like the previous one with copper sulfate, not considered to be at equilibrium. So why not? What's going on with this equilibrium? Importantly, a system at equilibrium must meet some important criteria. And many changes or reactions are reversible, but are not at equilibrium. At this point, you might want to just have a little look at another video clip. And there's an introduction to equilibrium video clip. The link is on your file list, but it's also um, accessible through this slightly shorter file link here if you wish to have a go at that. So the first of the features of a system at equilibrium is that it must be a closed system. So let's take this example here. On the left, we've got a washing machine with the door closed. On the right, we've got washing hanging on the line, which is an open system. So if you've got wet washing in a washing machine with the door closed, you would not expect it to get dry. Something has to change. Somewhere has to be available for the water vapor to escape. Whereas in the right hand side example here, the washing should become dry because the water vapour escapes out into the atmosphere and that can then allow more water vapour to be produced at the surface of each of those pieces of laundry so, so it dries. So it's this closed system which is needed for an equilibrium to be established. So the first of the criteria or features of a system at equilibrium is it occurs in a closed system. The second one is that the reaction is dynamic. That means that the forwards and reverse reactions are both happening all the time. Because that's true, uh, it follows that both the reactants and the products have to be present at all times. And importantly, at equilibrium, the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. Now, because those rates are equal, the macroscopic properties, so things like density, concentration, colour, remain constant. Let's consider then the possible concentration profile of a system which is reaching equilibrium. So if this is the time taken over here, the time of the reaction, and this up here is the concentration. In the example here on the screen, the reactants are starting high, um, and the concentration dropping and the product starting low and the concentration increasing. And the point at which that equilibrium is first established is probably somewhere about here. The point at which both of those concentrations stay constant and stop changing. So the equilibrium is established 
about there. And in this portion here, the concentrations are constant. And that is because the rate of the forwards reaction becomes equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Or indeed the forwards change, reverse change, if this is a physical change rather than a chemical change. So importantly, when does a reversible reaction become an equilibrium? Equilibrium is reached when both the forwards and reverse reactions happen at all times and with equal rates in a closed system.